Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very, very interesting little knife right here, and very, very hype knife. This is the uh, Honey Badger Knives Medium Honey Badger. I guess that's the brand. Uh, whatever it is, um, it was sent to me by Frankie and, Ver uh, Frankie and Bird over at the Birdshot IV channel. Thank you very much, Frankie and Bird, for sending this guy along. Um, uh, like I said, they're great folks. Uh, they watch their channel absolutely 100%. Next thing, size comparison. This is um, actually kind of a nicely sized knife. This being the medium version of it um, is right in the same vicinity in terms of sharpened edge length as the uh, Spedico Delica and the Rat 2. Actually, we'll talk about the Rat 2 a lot later, but it turns out the blade profile is almost identical, which works well in the Honey Badger's favor, I'll say that much. Um, so there it is there, and then against the Ontario Rat number one, we'll put it right here. Beautiful. So, um, there you go. Next thing, uh, this is an interesting piece because, uh, honestly, uh, no one had kind of heard of it and then suddenly, bam, hype everywhere. Um, it, it's made by somebody or another. Um, the, 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 the company that seems to distribute them in the U.S. is Western Active, which is a thing. But the thing is, um, this knife is one of those knives that every so often something new will be released to something either from an existing company or in general where the, the internet will light up. And I will get a bunch of different messages from a bunch of different people saying, Nick, you need to check out the blah. And it, this has been that blah very, very regularly lately. Just, oh my God, Nick, you need to see this. Holy crap. And a big part of the reason for that is that this is a budget-focused knife. I'll put that out there right at the beginning. This is a $33 knife. Um, and so everything, you know, I'm going to talk about, you'll have to keep that in mind. But anyway, so it's uh, completely out of left field here, but it's uh, gotten a lot of press and a lot of hype, and so I figured I'd check one out. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this little honey badger right here. So on the good side, um, this has a very nice blade um, in a couple of different ways. Like I said, it's got a, a good shape because it's got some flat, some belly, some tip. Um, it has a, a nice opening hole, and it's a chamfered opening hole. And although this isn't great for thumb work, although you can do it, um, the detents may be a little strong for that. I guess you can work it. Um, it is also flicky as well as flippy, so that's good. Um, it has a relatively thin edge here. It has a nice uh, tall flat grind, which contributes to that. And it's got a uh, sharpening choil that also happens to be a finger choil and is fully jimped, which is a thing. But you know what? The blade on this guy is great. Um, I like many elements of it. Everything but the steel, actually. Um, and so that that's good. Next thing, this has a very grippy FR red handle. And frankly, it has chimping freaking everywhere. This guy has texturing. It just the entire handle is texturing. You've got 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 texturing here and here. Holy crap, is this thing textured. And couple that with the fact that you got the flipper tab right here in the middle. As you're choked up on this guy, this is not going anywhere. Like, seriously, this thing is crazy. They have a attended the Rick and the Rick School of Crazy Texturing. And you know what? It works out well, so that's good. Next thing, I gotta say, I love the name and I love the motive on the, in general. They have a picture of a freaking honey badger on the side of it, and the entire knife has a honeycomb sort of theme. Um, the honey badger, of course, being a badass, nasty animal uh, out, of the, uh, out of the Africa, and uh, I love the fact that they picked up on that and uh, using it here in this, in this knife. In a world of overly tactical, you know, taking yourself too seriously, ZT0452CF, this is the honey badger, and I love that. That that's great, and just makes it. I don't know. It appeals to me. It's got a sense of humor, which is good. Um, next thing, the ergos are actually pretty solid. Um, there is a little bit of hot spotting uh off of the jimping on the inside of the sharpening choil slash finger choil there. A little bit of a hot spot on the back of the clip, but overall in the hand, this works pretty well. I I do like this guy in the hand. No big issues there. Next thing, this does have a nice deep carry clip. It is, unfortunately, right side only. Sorry, lefties. Um, but the thing is, it works. No problem there. Next thing, this comes in three different sizes, actually. Um, you can get this guy as a small, a medium, or a large, uh, which is nice. This, of course, being the medium version. Um, and you can also get it in tan or green or black, and that's also very nice. That gives you a little bit of a, a variety there, and the fact that they're able to deliver that kind of variety this early in the run, that's nice. Very often, it takes makers a while to scale up to that. So, good. Um, next thing... Although it does have a honey badger as the namesake, it is not particularly crazy or nasty. If you've seen the YouTube video, frankly, you should go see the YouTube video. Just type in crazy, nasty honey badger, something like that. Um, absolutely spectacular. Then finally, um, this has a very, very nice price. It's not my video, by the way. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, there's a very, very nice now I'm thinking of the Honey Badger video. <laughs> See it run in slow motion. Um, anyways, very nice price here. Um, it has a uh, $33 price tag on there, 
and that's that's just great um, because it's coming in in that range where it becomes accessible to a lot of people and it's competing with a lot of the budget greats. So that, that that's absolutely good. So to me, that's what's good here. So it's got a very nice price. It is um, a tan green, black, small, medium, large, lots of size options, nice deep carry clip, solid ergos that's not going anywhere in the hand because holy crap is this thing textured. Um, it's got the honey badger motive, which is just making this guy a lot more, uh, it's just not taking itself too seriously. And it's got a blade that's absolutely great. Um, to me, what is really great about this knife, though, is the action. Um, the action on this guy is great for the price. I'm going to completely no risk deploys reliably. I think only once have I had it fail to deploy, and that was because I'd kind of partially deployed it, and so it was a little past the... Look, this is really, really good action-wise. It has a nice stiff detent, a very solid action on bearings, um, and it can be flipped or flicked as well. And you can even, if you're, you're particularly skilled, you can pop it out using the thumb hole on the bearings too. Um, I, I like very much this action here. It's, it, it works um, and it is reliable and it is way better than a lot of the stuff that you get on the lower end generally. So to me, that's what's great is that for a $33 knife, the action on this is very good. Oh, and by the way, y'all, let's just see it kind of you can wiggle it shut pretty straightforwardly. So that, to me, is what's great. On the bad side, uh, first off, holy texturing, Batman. This is nuts. Um, it, it, this has a huge amount of texturing. Not a big problem, actually. And you know what? It's applied tastefully, and it's not like tearing into your hand or anything. But wow, they like texturing. The one area where I don't like the texturing so much is right here. You can see here they put a bunch of texturing right underneath the flipper tab. And what that means is as you drop your finger on there, you land onto this texturing. Now, the thing is, though, this is G10, or I'm sorry, FRN. So after a while, that's going to kind of wear away anyways, but eh, it's one area that texturing shouldn't generally be. Next thing, um, the steel on this guy is 8CR13MOV. That is a steel that is either barely inadequate or barely adequate for everyday carry. Not quite sure which. The thing is, it's fine for the price, but it's pretty uninspiring. Um, but again, 33 bucks. I can live with 8CR. Next thing, this guy has a pocket pecker like nobody's business. And in fact, with the little circle around there, yeah. Um, so this is just going to be as you're carrying in your pocket, pecking on whatever's in your pocket all day long, hitting your wallet, your phone, whatever else you got in there. Um, and this is kind of uh, shameless. It has, it's just right out there. Given the contouring tries to keep that flipper tab away from other things, but still, um, that's that's definitely a thing. Um, next thing, the... Um, this is kind of weird and amorphous, but looking at the packing materials, there are no fewer than three different company names involved in this guy. Uh, on the clip here itself, this is the Ultratech FM Black. Um, uh, on the business card that comes with it, this is by Weston Active. And then in the packaging itself, um, this is from uh, Light Optech. And the thing is, is, now we've got three different companies involved in this, uh, Ultratech, Western Active, and Light Optech. And i got to be honest, all three of those sound like the companies that email me every night in broken English asking how much I'd charge to review a new iPhone charging cable. But I digress. I don't want to sound like I'm biased, but part of the problem with this kind of situation, where you've got a bunch of companies that no one's ever freaking heard of, is that it's a little bit unproven. Um, you know, say what you will about Kershaw or Ontario Knife Company or those kinds of things, but the thing is, we know for a fact that generally once a knife knife is built, the quality stays relatively, I mean, there's a variance, and especially with lower end stuff, there, there can be, but generally it's not the case that one run is great and the next run is terrible or that they're going to just switch steels and not tell anyone. We kind of know that much, at least about those kinds of companies. Um, but the thing is, this is a relatively new knife, at least in the U.S. The only one, it's very possible that only one run of these guys has arrived. And so we don't know whether the next run is going to be from the same factory, etc. Um, look, I have no reason to believe that this is going to be anything other than the same when you buy one in a year or two years or whatever, but I encourage you, perhaps more than most, to do a little research before you pick one of these guys up, especially it's, um currently August of the 2018. If you're watching this a year or two down the road, just make sure, do a little Google and make sure that they didn't have like a fall off or something like that. I'm maybe being overcautious here, but anytime there's a brand new maker, um, generally I don't even address them, but this had enough hype that I felt like it, I needed to just be a little cautious. Make sure that nothing's changed, that they haven't dropped off or anything like that, because often pump and dump can be a thing in the lower end. And then finally on the bad side, this guy is kind of more of the same. At some level, I, I like a lot of elements of what's going on here. 
here, but the thing is, all of those elements have been elsewhere. And in fact, I kind of had to convince myself that this wasn't a uh, a clone of the steel wheel cut jack, uh, which is another really uh, great knife with a big choil, etc. Given that was on washes, this is on bearings. And if I actually hold the two up side to side, so to speak, I don't have it with me, but if I look at them side by side online, there are there are enough compelling differences that this is very clearly a different knife. I don't even want to call it an homage. But the fact of the matter is that this is basically a very similar knife to knives that have been made before. This isn't really bringing anything particularly new to the table. It's a very compelling budget option, but it's one of those knives that is kind of uninteresting in that way. It's just like, yeah, this is another budget option. The, the thing that this has going for it is that, well, this brand hasn't made this before. And so, um, to, to me, that's that that's not great. Um, it just feels like, you know, okay, another knife, great. Um, and it, there's nothing too new or novel about it. So, new or novel. Uh, pretending those are different things. So that's the bad to me, is that there is kind of a more of the same, like, okay, yeah, another one of these. Um, It is an unproven brand, and in fact, it is three unproven brands, all unable to agree who's doing what. Um, It is pocket packing for sure. It has an 8CR13 MOV blade, but for the price, okay. It's got some jipping under the tab, and holy crap, did they texture this thing. On the ugly front, honestly, I haven't found anything ugly yet. So um, final conclusion... Look, I think this is a fine knife for the price. It's got nice ergonomics. It's got a nice design. They have a sense of humor about it, which I really do appreciate. And they've got a nice variety of sizes and colors, ranging from, if this is the medium one, I think that really is medium, as opposed to, I don't know, companies that make mini that's just regular sized. It's that, I don't know, just, just, just saying... Guys, just saying. Uh, but anyways, um, and I, I like that. And then it's got an action that's just very good for the price. Absolutely. Yeah, it's 8CR13 MOV. It's coming out of nowhere from three companies that no one's ever heard of. And it's 33 bucks. But, you know, the thing is, it's 33 bucks. Um, for that, I will take some 8CR13. I will take some unclear origins, etc. Now, the thing is, though, um, th th this knife was very, very heavily hyped. A lot of people just lost it when this guy came out. Um, and I think that's great. And I really do appreciate when viewers are sending me things like, hey, Nick, you need to check this out. This is way better than you might think it is. Because that's, that's how I find new gems. And so I appreciate that. And I totally get that budget knives are more exciting than most because they're, they're, they're accessible to a lot of people. I, this is a reason why I love doing budget knife reviews. Um, and so something new in that budget domain, especially something new with a great action, can make a lot of waves. But the thing is, that is partly because it is something new. You know, if the space has already been, you know, largely the, the same for a little while, anything is really exciting. But if we look at the competition to this, um, there is really fierce competition. Um, this guy actually costs more than the uh, CRKT Ruger LCK, which is a knife with an action that is as good as this one, although given it's not fall shutty because it's on washes. Um, this is slightly pricier than the uh, Kershaw Atmos, which is another really good action showpiece in 8CR13 MOV, which is frankly a little bit more of an attractive design. This is almost, uh, this is actually the same price, I think, as the Ontario Rat Number no. 2 in D2 Steel. This is one of my just go-to recommendations. Um, the Rat 2 D2 is just so damn good that it's really hard for me. Like, I have bought these for a bunch of people who just need a knife. Um, it's really, really hard to say anything bad about this guy. And so this is kind of the 800-pound gorilla in the budget space. And then if you want to spend a little bit more, you're willing to, you can jump up to the uh, Ruwaiki... I'm sorry, no, it's the same price. Uh, the, the Reiki Ray Kassa, um is a really, really great option. It's a, an action showpiece and such. And then even the Steel Wheel Cut Jack, which is probably the most similar knife to this. But um, it is really, really, really interesting uh, and is D2 steel and only about five bucks more. So look, I understand that the Honey Badger just doesn't give a shit about the competition. Eh? Honey Badger YouTube restaurants? No? Okay. Um, but I sure do. And honestly, if I come into the situation where I've got 35 bucks to spend on a knife, I would probably not send you here, because the LCK of the Atmos is going to give you a very similar action at a, a slightly lower price. The Rat 2 D2 is, frankly, a better functional tool. It cuts a little bit better, D2 is a slightly better steel, and ergonomically speaking, I like this guy a little bit more. It's just, this is so damn hard to beat. The uh, Roiki Ray Cusser is a really impressive knife, and absolutely an incredible value. It, it just, it feels like, uh, just like, whoa, how did they make this at this 
his price point. And the cut jack is frankly remarkably similar, but it's got a better steel and it's on washers. So I don't know that for 35 bucks this is where I'd go. That said, I do appreciate them targeting this budget price point. Absolutely. And I appreciate a solid action, and I appreciate them not taking themselves too seriously. And if they are able to stick around as a company and try some more more kind of newer, interesting designs, I think they could absolutely be a fixture on the lower end. But honestly, uh, at this point in time, I don't feel like it's bringing too much new and interesting to the table. I look at this guy and it's like, yeah, it's another good budget knife. But we've got a lot of good budget knives out there. And I think they'll need to do a little bit better if they really want to win that market share. Because right now this just feels like, well, there are a lot of great budget knives out there. Let's make one from our company. It's just like, okay, that's... Yeah, and the fact that it's novel makes it interesting, but that doesn't tend to stick around in the long term. And so my final, final conclusion here is if you pulled to this knife for some reason, maybe you really love honey badges, really hate cobras, something like that, then great, have fun. It is absolutely a fine knife. And I think that honey badger knives or whatever the heck the actual company involved with this thing is, is a company to watch. Um, and so I hope that they do stick around and keep dropping cool budget bases, but I think that there are other, uh, I think that there are also a lot of really great budget options out there, and I I just don't know that the honey badger itself is going to dig its way into your heart. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.